Hi everyone, this is Kai from Mandalas by Kai in the Studio Annex, also known as my living room. I have to set up a separate space to do canvas prep. So today I'm going to walk you through the process of preparing a store-bought uh, canvas, which we know already comes primed with a base layer of gesso. This is a stretched canvas, and so I'm going to walk you through what I prefer and what I call the Sullivan method of canvas prep for dot painting. So this is a standard um, eight by eight that I purchased at Michael's. Uh, it's a level two, so it has a nice, uh, nice um, clean edge on the back. So the first thing that I like to do with these canvases is I want to protect those stretcher bars. So I'm going to tape off the stretcher bars. Now this might seem like a silly step for most people, but I like the stretcher bars to stay clean and as most of you probably know, painting can be um, a, a, a messy proposition. So you just want to uh, run, this is just standard taping, uh, painting blue, blue tape, and you just want to run it around the edge you want to get as close to the edge as you possibly can. If you get a little bit over, you can just use a little screwdriver just to tuck it in. Um, so uh, while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about, you know, um, clean space. As you can see, I've got some brown uh, paper that I got in a roll down on my table. Um, this helps um, keep the table um, clean. Uh, while I'm working um, because it does live in my living room I, I like it to stay clean so that's the taping process now to um, allow me um, a little bit freedom in um, keeping the canvases off the table so that if drips do develop which I hope they don't but sometimes they do the canvases don't stick to your surface this way so we use push pins and um, these stretcher bars are very easy to just stick a pin into and um, you want to do one in all four corners. I'm a firm believer that good prep um, promotes good art. So uh, take these extra few steps, um, give yourself some time. If you're going to use the Sullivan method of canvas prep, I would highly recommend doing multiple canvases at the same time. There we have our canvas ready for our gesso. Now, as many of you know, the surface of a out of the wrapper canvas is very rough. And when we put our dots on it, we can have dot bleed. Uh, the edges aren't crisp. So this is why I developed this method. I consulted with another fine, uh, fine art painter uh, who happens to be my mother, about how I could make the surface smooth and we discussed it and I uh, worked through um, this process to develop the canvases. And as you can see, I have a lot of canvases here that have already walked through this process. So uh, once we're finished with this one, I will show you our next step, our, our final step in canvas prep. Now this is some of my white gesso um, that I mixed up a few days ago. Um, as in the previous video, I stated this is a thinner gesso, uh, so um, the uh, recipe is slightly different in terms of the level of glue. So you want to apply some thin coats, and you want to use even brush strokes, and you want to work from one side to the other and nice, nice even strokes. You don't want um, a lot of gesso to build up in one area. So you just give yourself, you know, the ability you can draw out and just make sure you've got a nice thin coat. And then you wanna do your edges. On the Michaels level twos, you have a nice rounded edge and um, I like that. Right, you want to do your gesso prep all the way around. Uh, 
don't apply too much to the sides. And sometimes I do the sides first. You want to make sure that you get all of those corners where they fold the canvas. And then you want to go back through your top just to make sure that you are that is done. Now you want to let this dry thoroughly, about an hour, and then your next coat you'll want to go in the opposite direction. So if you went from left to right on your first coat, you want to go from top to bottom on your second coat, and then on your third coat you would again do opposite directions, so left to right. Uh, the nice, um, the nice, uh, the push pins addition is really nice for getting right up under the edge and cleaning any drips that might run. Um, please be mindful of your drips as the sanding process um, gets a little bit more difficult if you've got large blobs or drips on your canvas. So let it dry thoroughly, even strokes. Use a nice brush. This is a, the fine uh, touch two inch flat brush. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It came in a set of three and small, medium, and large. Um, don't use your gesso brushes for paint. Dedicate a brush to gesso and use only for gesso and keep it nice and clean. And um, there you are. So make sure that you seal off your bottle. I'll clean the brush a little bit later. We're going to let this um, dry and I'm going to talk about the next process. So I have sanded all of these already but I'm going to uh, show you um, once you have your three coats of uh, thin gesso on what the process is to get that super smooth glass-like finish. And you can hear on the surface here, you've got that really nice smooth feel. You'll be able to feel your surface and tell that you've got a nice smooth surface. So what I use are sanding blocks. These are 240 grit uh, sponge sanding blocks. They're lovely. I get these at Home Depot. They come two in a package for about they're a little on the spendy side, about 10 bucks, uh, 10, 12 dollars, um, but they're washable. So you can use these over and over again. And then I also buy packaged 240 sheets. And so when these start to wear down, I just wrap a fresh sheet of wax, of uh, sandpaper around the block. So the first step in uh, sanding down your canvas is you wanna do your sides. So you just work side to side and the top here on the edge okay your corners really nice and again side to side your top edge because that's going to be visible to um, your um, patrons and you want to be firm with it but not aggressive okay if you find that you've got little um, Phrase. These particular canvases came from Dick Blick, and they don't um, fold in the corners nicely. So they do tend to fray, but you can fix that with gesso. So there you are. So you get your sides really well. Now for your tops, I recommend working flat, and you want to work with the side first. You want to do your edge, and that is going to be right up against that stretcher bar. You're going to feel that stretcher bar underneath, okay? And you go around to all the sides here and here, and just you know, taking down all of those nubbies, okay? And nice and smooth. You don't use your hands, yes, you're going to get dust. Yes, I recommend wearing an apron. Yes, if you have breathing or respiratory issues, I recommend a dust mask. And don't put a fan on yourself when you're working because it'll blow the dust all over everywhere. So uh, once we have the edges nice and smooth, then I recommend in circular motions, 
around the interior of the canvas, which is the, the um, part of the canvas that is not supported by the stretcher bars. And just work around and around, around and around. Okay, and then you can do up and down motions. Okay, and turn it up and down motions and then feel the surface. If you still feel uh, nubs, then you haven't sanded enough. You just can go to that particular spot and voila, there you go, nice and smooth. Okay. Basically what you're doing is you're evening out the canvas. The application of three coats of gesso fills in those valleys on the twill of the canvas. And so now you're taking down what is built up on the hills of the canvas twill. So once you feel that you've gotten it nice and smooth, you're going to want to clean it with a damp, a clean damp cloth, soft cotton works best. And don't worry, you're not going to damage it by getting it wet. You want to just give it a nice, good clean because it has dust on it. Okay? So that is our um, uh, next step. Okay. Now we are going to make this canvas um, ready to prep, prep. And I'm going to ask my videographer if she can reach into the top drawer there and get me out the jar of black gesso because I failed to do so. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So this is my homemade black gesso. And we're going to use a clean brush. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. I keep one of those little rubber mats hanging around um, and uh, I like to I like to do that now I like to use the bigger brush for the um, black gesso because this is a little thicker I like it a little thicker so you don't want too much on your brush but you want a good amount and you're just going to apply a nice even coat you're going to apply two or three coats of the black gesso um, as you would your paint. And you're going to have drips, so utilize the drips. It's not necessary to go ahead and paint the back. Um, I do that after I'm finished with my, with my painting. Um, but you'll understand why I put the tape on the back, because this process can be a little messy. So you just want nice, even coats all the way around your canvas. And those push pins come in handy too when it comes to this process. So um, try not to overbrush your surface. You want that surface to be nice and smooth and even. Okay, there's canvas one. I'll show you that again. So, sometimes I hold the canvas while I'm doing, especially the smaller ones. I'll do the top first. Nice even coat. I'm going to take away some of it so that you've got a nice even coat. Apply just a little bit more to your sides. those little corner gaps. It's not really critical that your sides are smooth. You know, I don't typically uh, worry about those quite as much as I do the top. And then back again to your, um, your, your uh, top. Okay, I'm going to move this over a little bit and slide these out of the way. The bigger canvases do require that I work um, because you're gonna this brush won't fit the whole canvas. 
so you want to this is the other reason why I like to put the push pins in is that I can just kind of reach over like this and see my edge and that edge is done and then the next layer you kind of want to brush into the last layer nice even coat and our last coat for the top remember you don't want any lumps or bumps or streaks so even Steven is the the key there okay get it in the light you can kind of see it and then you can work your edge now with these Michael level 2 canvases they've got that nice curved edge so you want to make sure that your curved edge is really nice and clean because your patrons are going to see that okay. I typically brush down like this and then I'll do a quick uh, strip, you know, swipe across the hole. And that gives me nice even coverage and get into those nice folded corners. I like those nice folded corners that Michaels has on their level twos. I don't get any fraying at all. If you get a little spot of whatnots, now this is the side that I painted upside down, so I'm going to go through and make sure that everything is good to go. And because my top is nearly dry, I'm not going to put my paintbrush back into it. Okay. Um, this is a six by six. I um, pretty much can hold it for the entire process. Now in the sanding, um, I or in the application got a, a blob of white gesso on this and the sanding took quite a bit of work to get that blob out. You want to avoid sticking your nails or your fingers into the back of the canvas because it will make a little bit of a dent. It will work its way out but again um, you know, the less pressure on the canvas surface the better. So we're going to do our sides here and make sure that everything is nice and clean and we've got a nice even coat okay. and just a little paint, a little bit of gesso on the brush and there we go. Okay, so I think that that explains uh, the process for the Sullivan Method. Uh, once these are uh, painted uh, one coat with the black gesso, I do the same as I did with the white. I do opposite direction second coat, and I may or may not, depending on my uh, personal whether the, the coats were really super thin and I decide I want to do a third coat, it's really about personal choice. Um, typically, I don't do more than two coats. Uh, typically, the second coat does, uh, I do tend to do a little bit heavier coat on the second application. But once all of your canvases are black gessoed or whatever color gesso base that you want to use as your dotting color surface, you want to allow them to cure for at least 48 hours. That's why you want to do these ahead of time and you want to do a lot you know, uh, at, at the same time. Um, it's a process that generally takes two days because you need the white gesso to dry for four, 24 hours before you sand it. So white gesso application on all of your prepped canvases one day you can sand the following morning, you wipe them down, let them dry for about an hour, and then start applying your black gesso by 
uh, the next day, depending on how warm it is in your area, your humidity level, you can actually begin to paint the following day, but I like to wait uh, 48 hours. It gives the gesso time to really cure and set. Um, what I love about gesso is that the um, um, chalk pencil that I use, which is a General White, uh, it General is the brand name, uh, I get it at Michael's, um, it washes off of the gesso nicely uh, without leaving any um, residual marks. Um, so that's the Sullivan method of canvas prep. Um, I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always willing to share my knowledge with other painters. I feel that this prep allows us to have the finest surface that we can on canvas to produce the best quality dotted painting. Also promotes longevity of that painting so that your artwork will last generations. So have a great day. Happy dotting. Um, see you soon. And that's all from uh, Mandalas by Kai. Bye-bye.